So there are a lot of misconceptions about asexual people and I think mostly that's just because asexuality is still a little bit new and a lot of people don't actually know what it is. Uh, and so that means there are a lot of moments where people are talking about asexuality or ace people or talking specifically to ace people and they don't realize they're saying something harmful um, or they don't realize the harmful stereotypes that are being perpetuated by the world. So as an ace person, I kind of wanted to take a minute to step back and reflect on those and let you know some of the things that are misconceptions uh, so you can be aware of that going forward. So I think the number one stereotype thing that most people think when they hear the word asexual um, is asexuality is for plants and I know I get it I understand why this happened but in recent years it has just become this very funny thing where I think uh, ace people themselves can kind of step back and be like oh my god I'm a plant haha <laughs> this is so funny um, but when you're talking to an ace person and you reference plants in any case um, it can be a little bit off-putting and kind of annoying and rude personally. Um, so the reason why a lot of people will associate plants with asexual people is because plants reproduce asexually. If you haven't taken biology in a while, I haven't. Uh, the only thing I can recall from that is that asexual reproduction basically means that you they don't have sex to reproduce and to become like another cell. Um, and so I don't actually know all the science behind that, but that's like a basic idea of reproducing asexually. Asexuality, not the same thing. We're not reproducing, <laughs> we're just asexual. So I think the term asexual probably comes from plants being able to asexually reproduce because they don't have sex to do that. Um, but like, there are two separate entities and people fail to realize that. And so it has, the really mean people have used it as a joke to compare us to plants. Um, but for the most part, a lot of people just don't know that asexuality is different from being able to reproduce asexually. So like, if you're gonna make a joke about me being a plant, maybe don't. Um, and I think another thing that goes along with that is this misconception that um, for some reason, people like to compare asexual people to inanimate objects. Um, which is harmful for a lot of reasons, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But another thing that is common with plants is people will call asexual people robots um, and compare us to all sorts of inanimate objects. And the whole reason they do that, specifically with the robots, um, is because we don't have feelings. And uh, it's like, if we don't have sex, that means that we are not an actual human being because humans and animals wanna have sex, but plants don't. And so um, it's a really, really off-putting. Um, that is one of the things if you're reading through books, there have been some problematic uh, stereotypes and passages that I've read personally where um, people will compare asexual people to inanimate objects. They don't have a soul, they don't have feelings, um, all because they don't wanna have sex or they're not sexually attracted to anybody. And that is so harmful because literally, you don't have to have sex to be a human being. I don't know if where that got lost in translation. That's the truth and I, as an ace person fully believe that I don't have to have sex to be a person. I don't know if you've realized this. Maybe you've been a virgin for a very long time, maybe not, but I'm 25, I've never had sex. I'm pretty sure I'm still a person. I still cry, I still have feelings, I exist. So um, don't compare us to inanimate objects, thanks. Another misconception people have is that ace people don't want to date. Um, ace people don't wanna fall in love, ace people don't wanna have relationships, ace people can't fall in love, any, anything like that. I understand where most of these misconceptions come from because it's easy to equate not being sexually attracted to somebody to not wanting to have sex, to not wanting to fall in love because I think sex is so often tied, tied up in romance um, that it's very difficult for allosexual people to understand ace people in general. Um, I've had multiple experiences now where I have been talking to somebody on a dating app and they figure out, they have figured out because I'm not very good at hiding it, uh, that I am on the ace spectrum. And they often, one of the first things they'll ask is, why are you on this app? Are you interested in dating? Do you wanna fall in love? And not everybody does. Not everybody on the ace spectrum wants to date or fall in love or whatever. Um, but if I'm on a dating app, <laughs> I think it means I want to date. There are a lot of ace people out there who do want to date, who do want a relationship, who do want to fall in love. Just because you're asexual doesn't mean you're aromantic. Just because you're aromantic doesn't mean you're asexual. Um, so there's a lot of leeway in that spectrum that I think a lot of allosexual people don't realize. And it can be really, really harmful asking these types of questions because it, it automatically puts this distance between you and this ace person because you just assume, oh, like you don't want to have sex. So obviously you can't fall in love. You don't want to fall in love. You don't want a relationship when it's like, 
yeah, I do. <laughs> it's not going to look the same as an allosexual relationship necessarily, but like a lot of these people do want to fall in love and do want to have relationships. So stop asking us. Okay. And I think this also goes along with the idea of like marriage and children and having a family. And a lot of, again, a lot of people just assume that because we aren't interested in somebody sexually, um, there's all these misconceptions of like, oh, I don't want a family. I don't want to fall in love. I don't want to get married. I am a separate person than anybody else. And so I have my own feelings and my own thoughts on what any of that looks like in my life. But I do know a number of ace people who are married, who do have children, who do want children, any of these things. Just because you are ace doesn't mean you can't have sex, doesn't mean you don't want to have sex. Um, and so it's a misconception, I think, that people get so caught up in who we're attracted to or not attracted to that they can't understand that we want the same things that an allosexual person wants. It's just like a little bit different, you know? And going off of that, talking about marriage and physical relationships, a lot of people have this misconception that ace people don't want to have sex. And a lot of them don't. <laughs> there are a lot of people on the ace spectrum who are sex repulsed, who are not interested in sex or don't see the point in having sex or whatever. But there are just as many people who are on the ace spectrum who are sex positive, who want to have sex, um, who maybe just like don't feel sexual attraction or who don't want to get married or who do want to get married or whatever. Um, I think the biggest thing, the issue with all these misconceptions is that there are so many different types of people in the world. Everybody wants something different. Just as much as allosexual people have that variation, ace people have that too. It's like, for some reason, I think people stereotype us into this one type of ace person who is so asexual that they don't want to have sex. They're uncomfortable around sex. Um, they don't want to be in a relationship. They're very aromantic. They're closed off to the world. Like they don't have any interaction with people. And that's like, like Sheldon Cooper. I think Sheldon Cooper is a very harmful ace stereotype. Whether or not he's arrow ace or not, doesn't matter. I think he probably is on some level, but people see Sheldon Cooper as somebody who at the start of the Big Bang Theory really was not interested in sex, didn't really want to get married, didn't want to have a relationship, didn't want kids other than like maybe a scientific, like a, a science baby that was created in a lab type of thing. And people see that and assume that that is what all asexual people are like. There are ace people like that. Obviously Sheldon Cooper, spoiler alert, ends up getting married and has a kid question mark towards the end of the series. I don't remember. So even he has proof that ace people can like get married and have children. <laughs> but for some reason, people see, only see ace people as season one Sheldon Cooper who doesn't want any of that and is very closed off and whatever. And we're all so different. I think that's what I want you to realize. Ace people have as much variation as allosexual people. It's just that allosexual people don't take the chance to get to see that. One of the worst things um, that you can say to an ace person at any time in their life is, don't worry, you'll find somebody someday. Oh, you know, maybe it's just not the right person. Like you'll figure it out once you find the right person. Once you find the right person, once you find the right person. And I understand if you're an owl person and if you're looking for somebody, that can be really important to hear. You know, it can be a great thing to say to somebody that, oh my gosh, like, don't worry, you will find somebody. Oh yeah, like I will. One day I'll find that person and everything will be okay, you know? And some people need that. Many, if not most, um, ace people don't need to hear that and don't want to hear that because I think oftentimes that can be used as an excuse from aloe people being like, oh, don't worry, like one day you will also be aloe and you will understand what it's like. You're not ace actually. You just have to find the right person. We don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that there's like the right person for me out there because I'm not looking for a person. Like my identity, maybe I will find somebody. There is always that chance, but my identity, is in me and myself and I know who I am. I don't need to find another person to tell me who I am. When aloe people talk to ace people like that, it's it's almost like you're discounting our identity that like, oh, don't worry, like you just actually don't know what you're talking about. One day you'll figure it out type of thing, you know? And it can be really, really hurtful and it, it really makes us feel like you aren't listening to us. And so never say that. <laughs> Please don't ever say that. It, it just comes off as really, really rude. Another thing people will say is ace people don't actually know their sexuality because um, they haven't had that sexual experience yet. They haven't dated anybody. Maybe they're a virgin. Maybe they just haven't done any of that, you know? And to that I say, <laughs> have you met a heterosexual Christian before? <laughs> people for some reason can't wrap their head around like a 14 year old ace person knowing that they're ace and not wanting to have sex with anybody versus a 14 year old Christian heterosexual person who is abstaining until marriage and like knows who they want, you know? Um, a person can be born and within like three weeks of their birth, they're hanging out with a baby of the opposite sex and automatically they're heterosexual and they know who they are. 
Um, but if an ace person is like 13, that is way too young because you haven't had enough sexual experiences yet. How do you know type of thing? Um, and so hopefully I just proved to you like the double standards and you realize like, oh, I actually don't have to have sex to know what my sexuality is. But it can be really frustrating, especially if you're like me and you're 25 and you haven't had sex before and somebody says like, oh, you know, you just like, how do you know that? How do you know that you're asexual? Well, I don't know, Jim. How do you know you're heterosexual? How do you know you were gonna marry a girl when you were like 12? I don't know. Maybe you just knew. It's crazy how that works. Another thing that I think is a big misconception is that ace people can't have like a dirty sense of humor. And it kind of goes along with people not realizing that ace people can be sex positive. There are ace people out there who are sex positive, who are interested in having sex and talking about sex and like whatever, they just like aren't sexually attracted to another person. For some reason, people are always surprised when ace people have dirty sense of humor. Like, I don't really know how to fully explain that to you, but specifically in my friend group, my friends have very, dirty brains. They think about sex a lot more than I think they realize. And so a lot of the jokes that we have are sex related. Um, and I think also this, this is really prevalent during like, if you're playing Cards Against Humanity, this is a really good teller. I am great at Cards Against Humanity. I don't know how to tell you this, but I win pretty much every time I play because <laughs> I am so good at morphing my brain into an allosexual brain. I think ace people are really good at um, understanding allosexual people because uh, we have to see it all the time. Like I have been consuming allosexual media for my whole life. Um, my friends are all super allosexual. And so I know, I know how sex works. I understand the dirty jokes, even if I don't like them, even if they kind of make me feel uncomfortable and I'm not a fan of them. Um, but like, I'm really good at Cards Against Humanity. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> One misconception people have is that asexuality is an excuse not to have sex. I don't even know how to talk about that. Um, using a whole sexuality as an excuse to not have sex. First of all, even if I was using asexuality as an excuse to not have sex, I, I, I think that proves that I'm asexual because I don't want to have sex because it makes me uncomfortable. Um, I think a lot of people are afraid to use like, the label of asexual and to be on the ace spectrum and to say that publicly because they don't necessarily know everything even though it can be really insulting when people say like oh my god you don't have enough sexual experience how do you know you're ace i think a lot of people who are in the ace spectrum are afraid because of that very reason it's not an excuse to not have sex some people will actually not use the label because they haven't had sex and they are scared that if they have sex it'll change their point of view on everything I feel like most of the time that isn't actually the case. Um, but even if it is an excuse to not have sex, like I don't wanna have sex with you. I, why does it matter? It's not an excuse. I just don't wanna have sex with you. So this last one that I wanna talk about is uh, a lot of people will stereotype and assume that asexual people will never find somebody who is interested in them romantically if the ace person is not interested in having sex. I know how terrifying that could be. When I was back thinking I was gonna start dating somebody, um, I spent a lot of time worried like, oh, when should I tell the person that I'm ace? Like, they're not gonna wanna date me if I'm not a if I'm not having sex with them. Like, the, the physical relationship is so important to allosexual people. Like, how is that gonna work? And I just wanna give you some peace if you are ace and let you know that there are relationships out there where you don't actually need to have sex with somebody to be romantically involved with them. I've had a number of people reach out to me who are in like, like serious married relationships where one of them is ace and one of them is aloe and they have figured out a way that they don't need to have sex all the time or at all um, to still be in a relationship. And I think again, what it comes down to is your personal relationship with a partner. If you end up finding, like you can find that person, uh, even though people use that against us all the time, like there are, there are people where you will find your person and that will change everything for you. Sometimes if you do find your person and you're on the demi spectrum, like you may actually decide that you wanna have sex with them. Maybe you realize that you wanna compromise and have sex with them for whatever reason, even if you're sex repulsed. Maybe you're sex positive and you're ace, but you are good with sex and you wanna have sex with them and that's how that works. I do know many instances of ace people who marry allo people and they don't have a sexual relationship. And I think what this comes down to at the end of the day is for some reason people always just assume that a romantic relationship has to have sex in it. I could make a whole video about this and I think it's very, it's a very touchy subject um, because a lot, of, that's one of the biggest things I hear about that is kind of ace phobic is that you can't have a romantic relationship without sex. 
I disagree. I don't think that's the case. Um, but that's where most of this misconception comes from is that allosexual people just kind of assume that all romantic relationships have to have sex. And I hear it all the time on TV, in movies. Um, it's usually used as like a snide comment by like a dude bro who's like, dude, like if you're not having sex, like yeah, that's not a real relationship, you know? Like I think Schmidt says it at one point in New Girl and it's every time it's said, it's very, very annoying because you don't have to have sex to be in a romantic relationship. Obviously there, there usually is a physical element to romantic relationships, but I think a lot of people just get so pent up on the stereotypes and so pent up on allosexuality that they don't give ace people a chance. And so they can't comprehend a relationship that's a little bit different than the norm where an ace person is dating an allosexual person and they ha they don't want to have sex. Um, I have a number of books that I've read too where sometimes what will happen is uh, the main character will talk to their love interest and be like, I know like you, I, I can't give you any sex, but like I do really like you and I would like to like be in, I am in love with you. Like, I don't know what to do about that. And the love interest is like, I would rather have, like I wanna have whatever part of you you wanna give me. Um, and I know there are people like that out there who are like, I would rather just hug you and like leave it at that and have that be our relationship than not have you at all. Um, and so, it comes down to individual people. It comes down to not playing into stereotypes and talking to your partner and all of that good communication stuff. So it is possible and it is a misconception that that can't happen. Obviously these aren't all the misconceptions about ace people. There's a lot of stereotypes we go through that I think allo people don't necessarily realize. Hopefully this sheds some light for you um, if you're an allo person and you're just starting to learn about asexuality. Um, talk to ace people, talk to your friends who are ace because a lot of times they can let you know if you're being ace phobic. It does happen a lot. Um, even when people aren't realizing it. And so if somebody is ace phobic towards me nine times out of 10, I'm like, they just don't know. It's fine. They're trying not, they're not trying to be violent towards me. I get it. But there are times where people will use it as a weapon and it's very upsetting. So, um, again, let me know in the comments if you've dealt with any of this, uh, if you have any thoughts on any of it, if there are things that I missed that you really want to touch on, the comments are a really great way to build community and talk to other ace people. And I would highly recommend checking that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.